You will have the support of the Humane Society of the United States along with several organizations. In closing, I do not agree that there are more important issues in the city right now. Patrons, citizens, and taxpayers, um, organizations, which they will state, um, the souls of young children, which will be read a letter, are being victimized by unlawful and ethical profiteers of animal cruelty in our city. It is time for the city to step in and take responsibility in a role in protecting the citizens and its children. Thank you for your time, and we are looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. Wait a moment. I'm going to get the heck out of here. Let's see what it's like. I have a little freedom. Kelly is going to bring you into the light, my dear, for the first time ever. dogs living in filthy, inhumane conditions, and now new accusations that one of the country's largest organizations dedicated to dogs, the American Kennel Club, may not be doing enough to protect animals. Today, National Investigative Correspondent Jeff Rossens here with the results of his investigation. Jeff, good morning. Hey, Savannah, good morning. This is going to be eye-opening for a lot of people. Look, when you go to buy a puppy, you want it to be happy, healthy, and well-treated. And a lot of people depend on the American Kennel Club to find the breeder. When you see that AKC logo, you think to yourself, it stands for excellence. You must be getting a good dog. But this morning we've discovered disgusting conditions and sick dogs at AKC registered operations. There's the Portuguese water dog, Matisse. It is the epitome of canine perfection, the Westminster Dog Show. It's best in show winner, it's the Affen Pinsel. And the American Kennel Club is proud to oversee it on the AKC's own website, calling itself the dog's champion, registering puppies with official papers and inspecting breeders to ensure proper care and conditions. Many dog owners count on it, looking for that seal before purchasing a puppy. But critics say there's an ugly reality you don't see. Some AKC breeders raising diseased dogs, malnourished, living in their own filth. So disturbing, now two of the country's largest animal welfare groups, the ASPCA and the Humane Society, are condemning the AKC. If I'm looking to buy a dog and I see it has been AKC inspected, AKC registered, does that mean I'm getting a good dog? Absolutely not. It really is just a piece of paper without any practical value for dog welfare. What has this been like for you? A nightmare. Lillian Devera thought she was buying a dog from a reputable breeder, impressed by this ad saying they were AKC inspected. Well, I assumed automatically that, that was, I was getting a very healthy dog that was coming from a quality uh, kennel. What did you end up getting? A very sick puppy. Sick, she says, with intestinal parasites, an upper respiratory infection, and a congenital eye defect. But records show the AKC had just inspected that kennel weeks earlier and found them in compliance. What do you make of that? Well, I would make that their standards must be low. Turns out it wasn't just her dog suffering. Law enforcement went into the kennel just two months later and rescued dozens of dogs. The breeders say they did nothing wrong, but according to a civil court judge, many of the dogs were in poor condition for a substantial period of time. Remember, the AKC had been here and signed off on the place. Time and time again, we're going and raiding places and then finding these dogs in miserable conditions. He says while most AKC registered breeders are probably fine, they're seeing too many bad apples from Montana to North Carolina. In some cases, those breeders are even convicted of animal cruelty. 
So we went straight to the AKC. If you had to grade your inspection program, what grade would you give yourself? I'd give us an A. In fact, our inspection program is more than 98% in compliance. Critics say that's just smoke and mirrors. Breeders pay the AKC registration fees for every dog. Yet the AKC has no idea what goes on at many of those kennels. Nationwide, how many breeders are there that have AKC registered dogs? That's a great question. We don't know. You don't know? I don't know. No, I'm sorry. What percentage of breeders that do have AKC registered dogs end up getting inspected? We do thousands of inspections annually. We've done 55,000 inspections since the year 2000. But what percentage of breeders actually get inspected? The percentage changes because it's a balancing act. It's Ballpark. I don't have that figure. I'm sorry. How many inspectors do you have? We have nine inspectors. That cover the entire country? That's correct. Do you think that's an adequate number? That's the number that we have. <laughs> And there's more. Animal rights groups say the AKC is actually protecting bad breeders, fighting laws that would regulate breeders based on the number of dogs they have and require new standards or inspections. You have opposed laws in several states that would crack down on breeders. Why? We oppose breeder limit laws because it's not the number of dogs that you own, it's the care and conditions in which they're kept. They should be helping the Humane Society in its efforts to crack down on these awful breeders, but they're protecting them. If you are looking to buy a puppy, experts say you should always visit the breeder first and check out the conditions for yourself. If they don't want you to come, experts say that is a major warning sign, a major red flag. Better yet, you can actually get a rescue dog in Savannah if you want a purebred. There are actually groups that specialize in rescue dogs that are purebreds. Good solution. All right, Jeff Rossin, thank you so much. I've got a sweet, sweet female who's five or six years old, really laid back, very sweet temperament. One little thing, she's missing her back feet. Her mama chewed her back feet off when she was born. So I said, Does she, can she walk? I mean, what? Oh yeah, she gets around. So she's bred this dog like this for six years with no back feet. I mean, it just, you know, it just, the mindset is just, you know, where do you stop? Like, what, what, you know, what is not okay with you? Maybe she should be pregnant and have somebody cut her feet off and see how that feels. Do you really think this is an okay thing to do to this animal? Newport continues to harbor businesses which support abject cruelty, as has been brought to your attention. And that's an ugly stain on our beautiful city. It's embarrassing to admit that our city still endorses practices which are widely held by its own residents as abhorrent, and I am talking about pet stores. Uh, 
of commercial breeders supplying puppies to pet stores and can be found in the scathing 69-page report of the Inspector General published May 2010. These are the parents and living conditions of pet store puppies. These are pictures of many of the same USDA violations I have read to you from legal USDA reports of breeders supplying puppies to Newport Beach. Please take a good look at them. We have obtained more evidence from violations currently and continuously taking place in the pet stores at Newport Beach. Um, citizens and constituents, I don't believe, will, will knowingly support cruelty. And when they find out that they're being defrauded, I think that they're really going to be upset. Look at the matting on the stock. Like a jacket. Hi. These nails are extremely overgrown. A human being did this to her. We've been out of here all day. And we our job is to rescue these animals and get them off the property and hold it together. We were about a half an hour from being out here. And it's hard to hold it together when you're holding something like this.